Hello, and welcome to Train the Trainers, a day in the life of an operator edition. We will be shadowing an operator at the Northport Wastewater Treatment Plant to see what it is like to work there. Say hi to Chris. He has worked at the Northport Wastewater Treatment Plant for 10 years and is the lead plant operator. He is going to show us around the plant today and let us see what a day in his life is like. Notice the checklist Chris has. As we walk through the plant today, he will be checking things off his list as he inspects the plant and make sure everything is functioning as it should be. This treatment plant has a 5 million gallon per day treatment capacity and does not have 24 hour staff like some larger treatment plants do. So it's very important to check that everything is running smoothly. Each morning, Chris checks the SCADA monitoring system and writes down the conditions of the plant, making sure to note down the operating parameters of each reactor. Chris also checks for any alarms that may have been set off. It looks like one of the post aeration controllers at the plant is giving an alarm for high temperatures. Chris will check this out later as he walks around the plant. Ports are available to visually check the influent and effluent of the plant. Samples can also be collected below. Right now, both samples have been taken out of the sampling cabinet for laboratory testing. In the electrical room, it is important to make sure the plant is receiving the power it needs to keep all of the electronics and machinery at the plant running. Now let's tune in and hear from Chris as he makes his rounds at the plant. Okay, so long as that's up, that means we got power. This is the um, breaker system for the standby power. And I'll show you the generator in just a minute. Go ahead and start one of the pieces of equipment that I need. And this is one of our standby generators. Um, this generator can actually run the whole side of the whole side of the plant. And um, it's designed to kick on within minutes out if we lose power out here. That's why I said this, this plant operates 24 7. Because even if we lose shore power, this generator will kick on. Some of the stuff that I'm looking at when I come in here and check it is to make sure this green indicator light is on. If there is a problem with this generator, alarms are going to flash. On, on one of these dials up here. LEDs are gonna flash and let us know that something's wrong with it. Um, these generators actually exercise once a week. Um, on Thursday, they turn on around noon and they actually put full power on to keep these generators functioning properly because if you just let the generator sit up, it won't work when it needs. And I go around, I check the hoses, let's do a visual check. I mean, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb if something's wrong out here because you'll see oil or any kind of other lubricant um, on the ground in here. I check the oil level, check the fuel level. Just in case something ruptured out there, this is an old anabol fuel meter. Uh, and once I'm done with that, I check it off on my list. Now, I can check off as I go. What I usually do, if it's not something that requires me to record, I don't check it off until later. Everything checks off good in here, so I go to the next area. And this is our newer area. It's not really new, but we call it the newer area because this was actually an annex of the wastewater treatment plant built a little bit later. It's going to be a bit noisy in here, but not above 84 decibels. Um, some of the things I check is to make sure it's on for operation. These fans are running. That light is not a problem. It's just telling us that the dissolved oxygen is high. Up there. That's not a problem. That's really letting us know that we're, we got more than enough out there. Any of our breakers are trimmed. If it's all, it's all for a reason. And again, this is our power coming in. And 
our switch station, the switch is over to generate power. So this is actual power coming in right here. If you have an emergency, you can switch over to this, and it'll work in the same way it would if you had short power. Turned on the device in there, it's called the grit classifier. And right now it's removing grit out of that channel over there. That's the inorganic material that settles. It can be sand, it can be mud, dirt, um, shells, fingernails, whatever. And this is the actual screen. We have two. We have a manual screen and we have the, the, the um, electronic one, an electric one. It's power. And what it does when this flow gets high enough, it's gonna rake those rags. I test it in the morning by either turning it on at the switch or raising this flow. most of it off of there um, it's a lot better than doing it manually with your hands in the event that this thing is not functioning properly we would have to actually go over here and rake it off with this rake off of that manual screen right there this is our actual brick bridge we got it sitting right here because we got a lot of build up right here this pump right here is pumping it from the channel and down in that trough and it's going into this area right here and the classifier is over there that was the device i was showing you earlier it's actually using centrifugal force and it's spinning it around and it's getting the heavier stuff of course and it's dropping it down in that pan as the water recycles through it comes back in this trough and it goes through the process again and it continues to go until we get as much possible out of this water before we send it to the next process this is our first weir and as you can see this is our raw wastewater coming in it's been treated a little bit it's been settled out and it's been it's been screened and you see it's been the, the inorganic material has been pulled out but it still has suspended material in it. it still has a little fat sauce and grease which we brought it that down to the end to that arger right there and now it's going into the primary treatment process million gallons per basin and I believe this from here holds three million. I can check off as I go but what I used to do is I check and then I go, I go back later and check it off. So everything checks off right now. I'm gonna pause right here and kind of backtrack a little bit. At this plant, we do A to Z, meaning we do anything from groundskeeping out here to operating equipment to chemical feed to mechanical operation to biological operations out here. And we have to know how to do this stuff really well. And these guys have been trained pretty well to know when we have events at the plant of how to respond to them properly and get the things resolved. The, the wastewater feed splits right up here. It comes, some of it comes this way. And what we do, we monitor how much goes into there. That's called an oxidation ditch.
and like I said before, it holds around 3 million gallons of wastewater. I said, it comes in here. This is an anaerobic zone for this process of a plant. But we just have it sitting here for a little while before we send it on to the next area. Then we send it over to the anoxic zone right here. And that mixer is mixing. And then it goes over into here. And this is where it gets ready to go around the whole carousel system and you'll get a better look at it when we get on this side of the plant that right there is not foam that's fat soils and grease hmm. the same thing that was at the head work like i said when it when we when, when it went over that weir it was all dissolved in there and as it gets in these areas we give it time to settle out and all the lighter stuff to flow and how we know we got a good flock, it'll look that color. There's billions and trillions of microorganisms in there right now that's treated. To make sure that I know that this thing is functioning right, I've been here for 10 years. So I can just about tell by the smell and the sound that everything is functioning right. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I don't actually come up here and, and visually check it. We're having issues over here. Like I said this morning, this, this happened. What it is, we got an area that's clogged up and I cannot get the flow. Right now we got our two operators out here trying to pump this wet well down. Yes. How's it going? Is it pumping down? It's going very slow. You might have an idea. Uh, we'll run it by you first before we try to do it. What you wanted to do? Because we we're not able to get it to go through the RAS. We're getting only about 25 a minute on the waste. Is it possible that we can try switching over the leads, blowing out a little bit, so maybe we can at least get enough going? Talking about getting the air log out of it and just sitting, pushing it back into the clarifier and then pulling it back through? Well, it, it would have pushed it back into here. Yeah, yeah. So it just try to get a little something loose, then maybe it'll pump a little bit faster. Yeah, if you're comfortable with, with messing with the power that way, you can do that. Just make sure you isolate it. If, uh, if you do get a minute, uh, I was gonna have you uh, look in the panels just to make sure, because I have not personally changed over the leads myself. Okay. I don't wanna screw it up anymore. So that's, that's all the progress we've been able to so get. So that's the return activated sludge, and we'll, we'll get another look at that on the older side. It had gotten so thick because one of our pumps clogged up and um, we can't even get this to pump down. What we need to do is we need to pump it down. Do you see where that chain is? We're gonna hook that chain up to this, this um, boom, on, I mean this crane lift system on this boom truck and we're gonna pull this pump up. And it's gonna be sort of like that one. We're gonna take it, we're gonna unclog it. The uh, significance of me telling you about this is people have to be mindful of what they put down their drain. Everybody thinks when they flush stuff, it just goes away. But what ends up happening, people like us, we have to come out here and actually unclog it. Um, any sanitary wipes that's made out of a more of a, I could say a clothy material that doesn't biodegrade, you don't need to flush it because what it ends up doing is stopping up in these pumps and we have to come out here and get one of our operators in a biohazardous condition to unclog them. Now, we know that's part of the process, but if, if, this, if me passing this information to you would make everybody more aware of what they flush, 
and reduce it 10%, that'll be a lot more off of us. But everybody seemed to think you can flush anything down the drain and it's just gonna go away. No, it ends up here. And then ultimately it still ends up at the landfill. It's just, you didn't flush it down in your future drinking water. Cause that's what all your water is, is reclaimed water from when you use it. We treat it and we send it out to the lake streams and estuaries and someone downstream collects it and use it for drinking water after they treat it through the water treatment process. Anytime any school, university, uh, uh, somebody that pays bills here in the city of Norfolk wants to come out here and get a tour of the plant, they don't need to just show up. But what they need to do is make an appointment with one of us and we'll give them a tour and it doesn't take a basic tour doesn't take no more than 15 minutes um a detailed tour what we're doing now is going to take a little bit longer because i'm trying to explain to you some of the processes that we're dealing with out here put in a system in, in case our pH is way too high and our ammonia is way too high. We'll, we'll start feeding it as it starts getting warmer. Right now we're not, we don't have to feed it. What you're gonna have to do, of course, is um you want to show me the Oh sure. Um yeah you're gonna turn it off. This power is still in there, it's just turned off. Yeah. I'm not trying to do anything there, just kind of get up on this thing. Are there these three wires up here? You can change either either one of these three wires here. Wherever it's at L, one through three, you can switch them around. And you should be able to reverse that pump. Okay. Sounds good. But um, if you're not 100% certain, because you see all these other devices that this thing is got in here that's control we're controlling with it go in there we can get the superintendent and get him to work with you this is um aeration basin one and like i said um it holds a million gallons it's similar to the the oxidation ditch as you can see it's more that milky chocolate brown color um got microorgan microorganisms that drive on the dissolved oxygen. You hear those blowers running in that building I was about to go into and check. They're blowing air bubbles down in the very bottom. And that's that's producing dissolved oxygen. The microorganisms that's in here is using that microorganism, I mean that, that dissolved oxygen to reproduce and to breathe and to help them feed and everything else. Um, the colder it gets, the less activity the microorganisms have in here. Um, some of these microorganisms produce their own dissolved oxygen. Some of them um, produce methane, um, acids, um, and some even eat each other, you know, and um, we like to have a good flock of different kinds in here. We don't want one dominating over the other because it tends to upset the system. And I know you're looking at this and you're saying, well, how do we know? Well, we're going to take you back inside to the lifeblood of the plant, which is our laboratory. And I'm going to show you how we find out if these microorganisms are doing what they're supposed to do. That meter is out over there. I got to go inside and look at it. This is our scum pit, and as you can see, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. Scum is just like the, the everything else that floats. 
It's part of the fat, oils, and grease and inorganic material. And like I said, in this clarifier, the heavier stuff settles, the lighter stuff floats. And as you can see, the squeegee is going across there and it's getting all of that stuff that floats and it's skimming it all. In our, in our efforts to make sure none of that stuff is being sent downstream, that's how we get it off of there. checking to look at the oil level which is decent and also making sure it is operational and I can tell by the sound of it if it's making a really loud racket I know something's wrong with it but we do more than just come out here and look at it we have a work order system and we come out here and do some maintenance on it about every two weeks so this thing is not just running without us actually checking it. purpose of me opening those up is to check and make sure they're not overfilling because they're using float systems to operate these things sometimes the floats get hung up and if you don't check them and the float is hung up you'll have scum spewing out of the top of one of those hatches there there's a levy there to keep it from just going straight out the plant this, this is the clarify tree. So they all converge in this one area. You see that, that um, white piece of PVC right there that's dripping? That's our bleach feed. I explain to you when we get back inside. Um, from our that laboratory analysis of how we know we're feeding the right amount. As it converges together, it goes into what we call a contact chamber. This contact chamber is engineered with detention time until it reaches the end over here. So to make sure that what's coming in here is being disinfected. Three six. I need to write that number down. You can barely see it, but it's easy. Due to safety purposes, you cannot come over this wall. Sorry, but you can film me over this wall. I'm just checking to make sure the bleach pump is feeding is not leaking anything. The actual bleach pump system is in here. It's feeding from one of these two tanks. It's self-explanatory, really, which one it's coming from. Whatever valve is open is the one that it's feeding from. It's, that's tank number two. It's feeding out of tank number two. As you can see, we're getting about to the end. This is the back side of the contact chamber. This wastewater should have been pretty much disinfected by now. It's still got a residual chlorine. We want it to be about 0.5 parts per million before we get it to the very end. This is what we call our pulse aerator where we induce dissolved oxygen back in it because we have to have so much dissolved oxygen in our airflow before it goes out to our lake streams, estuaries, you know, motorals or whatever. This is our final beer. It should be some residual chlorine in here, but we have a dechlorination system by the form of sodium bisulfite, which is gonna neutralize this chlorine. And how do we know it's neutralized? We run laboratory analysis to know. This is my very, very 
last reading that I can get, and that's the air fluent meter. I get the reading from the previous day. Air fluent flow meter. And this is our sodium phosphite building. And I just look to make sure everything is functioning. This meter is off, so I'm gonna write that reading down, but I'm gonna circle it to let everybody know it's off. And as long as it's feeding, which it is, it should be 1.025. Ow. And it becomes what they call waste activated sludge. And when it dries up, it becomes a biosolid. Most of the pathogenic material and, and um, volatile materials in this wastewater sludge has been pretty much inert and it no longer causes harm to the environment. We can't scoop it out right now when it's wet like this and apply it to the land. But when it gets more like this, we do, we got a third party that comes out and they haul it off. You cannot apply this to crops. No, it's not. This is still human and animal waste, but even though it's, bi bi um, it's degraded, but you can apply it to the land, open fields, and you can grow hay with it or grass but you can't grow crops with this stuff. You would have to heat it up, dry it out really, really fine until it be almost the consistency of coffee grains before you can actually use it as fertilizer. But this stuff does not get sent to any farms. I'm gonna say that again, it does not get sent to any farms. We have a, a hauling crew that comes out and they haul this stuff off to land applied. Even our collections people use this bed right here. We repurpose this drying bed to capture everything ungodly that comes out of the headworks and everything that comes off of these pump stations. And as you can see, it's all collected right here. After so many weeks of this sitting here and decanting and 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 draining out because it does drain out it goes back through the system to get treated again we're going to take the dryer stuff and get one of these dump trucks and we're going to take it to the sanitary landfill let's go on the inside for the final step is the lab to show you how we come up with our number you remember what i said about us having to know what's going on out there to know well, what happens every morning is the operator that's assigned to a laboratory, they'll go out and they'll grab chlorine samples. They'll test for uh, the contact chamber, which this morning it read, make sure I'm on the right day because they got several bed sheets, the 19th, 1.6 parts per million of milligrams per liter. As long as it's 0.5, above we're doing good on our disinfection before the wear it was 1.59 before the wear is that last wear right before it goes out of the plant where it's getting neutralized by the sodium bosulfite and as you can see the effluent reading was zero that's how we know that everything is functioning right we run samples these laboratory analysis every single day. We have to. Um, the rest of them are operational checks. Um, for example, your RAS, your, your return activated sludge, um, your set alometer. Slug volume, in, slug volume index it hasn't been calculated for, for today, but we don't usually look at today's calculations. We look at the previous days. And that's how I determine where I need the waste from, where we got our significant problem. As you can see, 
54,640 is a high number. That was over at the number three side where it was really thick and we couldn't get that, that sample this morning, couldn't get the, the wet well to pump down. I saw that yesterday, so I scheduled them to bring the boom truck out so we can pump that well down and pull that pump. Um, the other ways that we'll know, um, put this back in here. What's going on with the microorganisms, those three containers, every now and then, we'll grab a sample out of each one of those basins. One and two basins, and the number three oxidation ditch. And what we'll do is we'll come over here and we got a microscope and we'll do a wet film test and we have a sheet that tells us what microorganisms we're supposed to see in that flock and whether or not we're supposed to see more of these or less, than, less of these like rotifers, um, stock silates, um, you know, water bearers. Um, and then we sometimes we even see the little the worms in there. If we see a lot of those, that tells us an indication of what's going on with the microorganisms in the wastewater. Um, where does the microorganisms come from? We already have enzymes coming out of our bodies, so sometimes we induce more enzymes. Usually it's being induced by the collectors that go in around here to the pump stations. They pour that stuff down in the in their um, the manholes and they come in and then we use that those microorganisms to treat the water. So the microorganisms is eating all the volatile and all the they eat microorganisms as pathogenic. They're eating each other. So that's how we treat water. And the detention time from when the influent, which is the wastewater coming in, to it goes out of the plant, the air, final effluent is about 27 to 28 days. That's how long we detain it to treat it. It's important when uh, older generation operators like myself who have operated since its beginning retire, I stay around to help with training of the newer operators and staff because there's a lot of knowledge that goes out the gate when an operator retires. And the younger ones don't quite know everything yet because with the experience, you pull up to the gate, you know exactly when the plant's not functioning like it should. There's certain things you learn with experience just to detect with sight, sound, and smell.